Hey guys, Southeast Softwash, and uh, doing a little bit of a different video today. So this is not softwash related. Uh, might be a little bit of motivation related. So I've got a friend from church. This is an Ashley. They come in a couple different colors and sizes and shades. Uh, she goes to church with us. I've known her a long time, and she. Some of y'all have met her because she'll sometimes come and help us with projects at the shop. You didn't do no work last week, did you? No. Stayed oh, on the phone. Oh yeah, all I week. did. Kind of. It ain't. It ain't real work though. Yeah, she stayed on the phone work. for probably two straight days trying to find a washathon location. So That's just stuff when we don't have time to get to it, and it's something that she can handle. She'll help us out on that stuff. So. I wanted to bring her in and do a video uh, a while back just because she's got a really unique story and uh, it might be an encouragement to you. This has been a rough year for a lot of people, but there's always somebody that's got it worse and somebody that's had a worse experience. I don't know of a more cheerful, upbeat person and despite of probably every reason to have not to be upbeat. So this is still take number one. <laughs> She's already giggling a lot, so we'll Sorry. see if we can make it through well, you just said I'm cheerful, so. But you are, You want so. me to be like. No, that ain't gonna suit you. I can turn it so, off. So, how old are you? 23. 20, 23. 23. Um, yes. Um, how long ago was your wreck? Five years ago. Well, November will make five years. Five years, yeah. almost. almost. So. Years. So, not that long, but not really recently. So. How old were you when you had your wreck? 18. So for all you young drivers out there, be careful. I had a pretty bad wreck when I was 16 or 17, I can't remember. Um, driving early in the morning, right? Yes, oh, I was going Give over. us the story. Okay, so um, I worked at a Banda Cafe. Y'all probably don't know, don't know where that is, so I'm not gonna explain it. But I worked at a cafe and I was going to college. Um, and I'll try to cut out the arms, but before I went to college, I would work at the cafe some, or I would just go and get something to eat. And I was going there that morning, and it was like, it wasn't, a lot of people thought I hydroplane, but I didn't hydroplane. And this is another, like, good piece of advice. If something's wrong with your car, get it fixed. <laughs> because, like, everything had been wrong with my car, and I was like, getting different things fixed but I knew the brakes were bad but I wanted to wait till I had a break from everything like uh, fall, <laughs> fall break <laughs> I wanted to wait till there was like fall break to like get it fixed because I, I wouldn't have had a car you know to get to work or to college without you know if it was in the shop so I wanted to wait till then and so if something's wrong with your car especially brakes Get it fixed. Don't be like me. So, anyways, um, that morning, I think I left. Oh yeah, I remember. I left around eight, eight thirty. I left that morning. I went down the road. Everything was fine, but then I couldn't. I lost control of my car, and instead of being, I guess, instead of just like, I don't. I freaked out more than I should have, I guess. But I mean, anybody in that situation is gonna freak out because I didn't know what to do. And I had like turned the steering wheel really hard and my car went off the road into this ditch and the ditch is like super deep. Like if it's you, pretty high. Yeah, if you go past it you can't see like down there. Like it's really low. Um and so I was like I It was oh, raining? No. It was just like kind of muggy outside. Okay. But that was pretty much it. Um, but I don't think the road was wet. I don't know. I just know it was kind of ew, outside. And so, yeah, yeah just a, so, um, anyways, I just remember everything spinning. And a lot of people, I, don't, I always hear stories of people saying like their life flashed before their eyes. That didn't happen to me. It just all happened in a second and I was just there. So I don't know. Like it was just all like one minute I was on the road. The next minute I was down like upside in these down. woods yes upside down so your car rolled yes and you're upside down in a ditch it's still dark outside early in the morning yeah and it was i mean yes yeah, because it was so it how was long outside. did you stay upside down in a ditch before somebody found you two hours a man a man had drove by that actually lived in that area um he came by and he had this humongous truck and it had these big old mirrors on it 
And he actually saw my car down there, but he didn't call anybody because he said he had a dead cow. So he had <laughs> drove by, yeah, he drove by. So the okay. <laughs> next 30 minutes when he comes back by, he calls the girl at the, there's like a package store, calls her, and he's, which is right across from the cafe. And you know, I'm supposed to be at work too, so. I guess no. I mean, I was never late for work, so I don't know what everybody was thinking. So um, he calls her, and her name's Ashley too. Calls her. Everybody's like, name Ashley. Everybody. So he calls her, and he's like, "There's a, there's who a." Who was that? Uh, hey, preach. Not quite. No, that's tough. Never mind. <laughs> I was gonna get Brother Derek in a minute to come here and talk. So, um. What, where was I at? Upside down in a ditch in the morning, laying right. there. Oh, yeah. He called that girl. That's how I got found, anyways. He called that girl, said, Hey, I saw this card on here, but I didn't know to check on it. Finally calls her. She calls my manager and goes, Don't you have a girl that drives a blue car? And he's like, Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, she's like, Yeah. I saw him and said, He. She's like, <laughs> She's like, Yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> They all come over, well, the, there was a first responder there, thankfully, because all the men at that cafe wanted to just cut me out because I was like hanging and the seatbelt was like holding me up in the air. And all the men in there wanted to cut me out. Don't do that. Yeah, you don't do that. You don't move people that so, are injured. And let, you gotta do seatbelt. Especially spine. when I already couldn't move, you know? And so, um, I think God just knew, or I know God just knew to have that first responder there because he wouldn't have been there. There's no telling. Uh, there's no so, telling what would happen. You got to ride in a helicopter. Yes. With what injuries did you have when you left from the crash scene um, to the hospital? Well, from the crash scene to the hospital, I know it was my C2, C3, C4, and C5 were all fractured, which is pretty much all these broke, and then. Like there was a, <clears throat> like my main artery was like, this artery or something right here was like, I can't remember. I'd have to look, but um, I have it like on the chart thing, but it was cut. Um, and my whole face was pretty much cut up. Um, I mean, I was paralyzed from the neck down. I couldn't move anything. And when I got to the hospital, I was still acting like this. I was just like <laughs> looking up, couldn't talk. But I mean, you were in a neck brace. But I was in a neck brace. And um, they, yeah, they flew me there, and then everybody had gotten there, and they took me straight back for surgery. And then when I got out of surgery, I don't remember the first few days that well, obviously, because I was so like dosed up on stuff. But um, they told everybody that I would have a 50% chance of a reasonable recovery, which would take at least up to two years to get to the point to where I could, my right side was, I thought my, in, in the car, I thought my right arm was cut off because like the way my, my car was and the way I was like hanging in the air, all I could see was like half my arm and I couldn't feel anything. So I just saw blood all over and I was like, is it just late? It was laying in the grass. So I was just, I, it was just the way I was hanging. But they said my right side would never, like never work again. And they said the most, they could probably work with me on and get me to do is move one of those electric wheelchairs with like yeah. my left finger. You're, you should be, so according to your medical chart, you're a quadriplegic. Yes. You and when, if, when I go back, cause every year, you know, I have like a fall, I don't know why they're in May, but I guess that's cause that was a six month more, but um, that's not six months. I don't know. I don't know why it's in May. It doesn't Anyways, matter. it don't matter. Not Jermaine, um, but the conversation. <laughs> every time, the Germans ain't got nothing to do with it. Every time I go back for like the follow up, like they look at my chart and they look at me and they're like, this ain't the same person. Yeah. Like, yeah it is. <laughs> so, how many days were you in the hospital? It was exactly three, 21 days, three weeks. So, then you walked out of the hospital? Yes, I told him I didn't want to be wheeled out. Yeah, I had a signed paper, but I was <laughs> like, no, I came in here. <laughs> Stay right here. there, keep filming. Let me get uh, let me get somebody else in here. <laughs> Is that gonna be cut out? <laughs> I know he's gonna get in here. How long has this video so far? <laughs> 10 minutes.
Oh, so, that's good. Wait, you can sit down. Sit down real quick. I'll come over here. So, can you see me? Yeah. This is, uh, y'all know who this is. At the time, this was years ago, this whole town started praying. Like, this whole county started praying. Um, People so, overseas were praying. we've gotten up to the point where she's in the hospital, broke neck, neck actually laid out, can't walk, won't never... You're gonna be like, uh, who's the who is it? Uh, Chris Superman, yeah. the same. So take over from there. Um, we we get to the hospital, and uh, the the doctor comes out and uh, tells us that her break is the same as Christopher Reeves. That um, it will affect her breathing. That she'll be a quadriplegic, and um, he talked about the injury and. Um, said that she would have a 50-50 chance of having some type of independence like Christopher Reeves to be able to move a wheelchair with her mouth or something like that and um, so they do the surgery and uh, she she comes out of surgery fine um, she's alive that's that was a, a plus and uh, I, I, I'll be honest I went home and um, that night and I got on my knees beside my bed and, uh, and I told the Lord it wasn't fair for her to have a pastor uh, like me. I wanted her to have somebody that uh, a whole lot better than, than me. And I said, I, there, there's no way that I can tell this teenage girl that she's never gonna be able to move again. And um, I, just, I just began to just cry and, and call out to God and uh, the Lord reminded me that he is Jehovah Rapha. It's not just something that he does. He doesn't just heal. That's who he is. He is the, the Lord that healeth. And so uh, I just, um, I begin to tell people that, uh, that I'm not taking no for an answer. I can't take no for an answer. That um, she's going to move again. That God's going to heal her completely, 100%. And uh, I went back to the hospital, and me and Ashley started talking. And I, t I asked her, I said, do you believe that God can heal you? And she said she did. And I said, I'm not just talking about having a little bit of independence. I'm talking about completely healing you where you can move and walk again and, and be able to function like a, a normal person without any type of um, handicap. And she said that she believed that. And so I said, that's how we're going to pray. We're going to start praying that way. And uh, um, went back home. And the Lord spoke to my heart about what the Bible says in the book of James. Is there any sick among you? Let them call for the elders of the church. And let them anoint with oil and pray over. And uh, the Bible says the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. And uh, I'll be honest. I told God, I said, I fail in the righteous aspect of this world, but uh, the Holy Spirit of God that lives inside of me is righteous, and that part is what I'm uh, expecting to do great things. And so I, I, we went back, me and some other men from the church and another preacher from another church, and we walked in Ashley's room that day, and I had a bottle of oil. And I told her, I said, this is just regular olive oil. I bought it at Piggly Wiggly. I said, I put it in a separate, a, a, another bottle that I prayed and asked God to sanctify. And I said, I asked the Lord to sanctify the oil. And I said, this is just normal oil. That's all it is. There's nothing special to it. I said, I'm going to put it on my finger and I'm going to touch you and we're going to pray. And I said, there's no magic words. This is not magic oil. I said, we're just being obedient. And I said, the Bible says that obedience is better than sacrifice. And I asked her again, I said, Ashley, do you believe that God can heal you? And she said, I do. And uh, I took the oil and I, I put it on her forehead and we prayed. And um, I just, I never, I never believed anything different after that. I just, I just, uh, I don't know, I don't know how it happened with my heart but I just I couldn't tell this teenage girl at the time that she couldn't walk anymore 
And I know pastors have had to do that, and I'm not any better than any pastor out there. Uh, God just had a plan. And so we prayed, and uh, she, she was able to, to move her left hand. She was able to move her left hand a little bit. And uh, the doctor said that there are some nerves that are firing, but we don't know how long it's going to last. We don't know if it's sporadic or what, because at the time she couldn't make it happen every time. And uh, every day she began to move a little bit more and um, the left side really started moving really good, her left hand. And, and uh, I would remind her, I actually, we were praying for total healing. Shaking on me about that, right? <laughs> yeah. And it was, it was amazing because she, um, she's a very stubborn person. She's very <clears throat> strong willed. And so uh, she did, her dad, she didn't respond to her, her dad really well. She didn't spawn, respond to my daughter, Katie, who at the time her and Katie were just like inseparable. Um, she didn't respond to her real well, but everything that I told her to do, it was just like God was using my mouth. Like in the Bible where Samuel hears God and he thinks it's Eli. God was using the pastor to speak through and she was taking the authority that I was giving and, uh, and she wouldn't she wouldn't back sass she would do so exactly even what if, I said even more than the doctors because yeah. the staff at the hospital had gave up and oh, that's yeah. what you were going to be yeah if it wasn't for you pushing her mm -hmm. then you would still be half working right now yeah we went I went I got a call from her dad because every one of us everybody that we told everybody to pray for complete total healing and um, so she she started moving her legs and there was a doctor that walked in she said hey look what i can do and she moved her legs and the doctor said how are you doing that and she's looking she thinks it's a joke and she said how are you doing that and she said i'm just moving them and she said do it again she moved her legs again and the lady the lady doctor she got mad and she said you can't do that and walked out of the room and left never came back she never come back to see her again and the nurses said they passed her in the hallway and she was like freaking out yeah. that this quadriplegic was able to move. And it's not, there's, there's, no, there's no medical answer for this young lady, none at all. Um, every doctor that has seen her, she's still a quadriplegic. The, on her paperwork, she goes to the doctor and they're looking for the patient. And she's like, I'm the patient. And they're looking at quadriplegic, this doesn't fit. But her dad called me one day the, um, the the physical therapist and the occupational therapist that was working where I was going up there, if I missed a day, it was only one or two. Yeah, you I, never I, missed I, I don't think it's I missed a two hour one. drive. Yeah, it's a yeah, two hour drive there and a two hour drive back. And, and so I would go after work and at least uh, every day I'd go. And so he calls me and he said, are you coming up here? And I said, yeah, I'll be there as soon as I get off. And he said, um, they told Ashley, that they're not going to worry with her right side, that they're going to sh they're going to teach her how to compensate. And I said, no, no, that's not that's not what we're doing. And he said, I know, but that's what they're doing. And I said, I'm leaving now. So there's another lesson to learn right here. You don't have to do what doctors are just dudes with white coats. That's right. I can say stuff too. Yeah, they so practice you, medicine. Yeah, if you go to the doctor, you take what they say and you weigh it. You know, get a second opinion. And if you don't feel like they're doing right, tell them no. Because yeah. somebody's, you know, somebody's paying the bill. Yeah. But you were the only person that had enough when you walked in the room to say, no, yeah. we're doing this. I and it's not like them. you're just overruling their medical expertise, but just their mindset yeah. was wrong. I walked in that door that day, and uh, they were working with her left hand. And I said, Ashley, and I'm, I'm walking toward her. And I said, Ashley, and she turned and looked back at me. And I said, no, 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 no. We are not doing this. And I looked at that the physical therapist and the occupational therapist. I said, we have prayed and God has said he is going to totally heal her. We're not teaching compensation. We're going to work with that, with that right hand. And uh, they, you know, gave me a this and that and the other or whatever. And I said, no, no, no. And I took what she had in her left hand. And I put it in her right hand. I said, start working. And she started crying. And I said, I know it's hard, but you're going to do it. Now do it. And she started 
trying to move her right hand and you could tell it was taking every in, every ounce of energy in her to move and tears running down her face and i was really hard i was i was I <laughs> but <laughs> i just knew at that point that you know the good guy had to kind of take a back seat for a while and so i would show up uh, every day during her therapy sessions and um, i'd have to get on to her and she responded every single time god god answered the prayer because of the faith that people had and her faith that she had because god can heal based on my faith we find that in the book of mark where the bible talks about the man with palsy being led laid sent down through the roof and they said because of their faith god said because of their faith so i know that our faith had something to do with it but she had to believe she had to believe to, to for all of this to take place tell the mashed potato story before we man this is That's so amazing <laughs> this is so amazing we're in there one day and she has really done well with her right hand she is she's worked so hard up to this point and the the physical therapist and occupational therapist they said um we've got a treat for you today and i think it was the day they brought the dog in too wasn't it? It was, they it brought was the dog day. in and she's be, she's able to play with the dog and and uh, she loves animals and so they you know and they said that this is not the end we want to do something for you we want to buy you a special lunch what do you want what's your favorite food and she said mashed potatoes <laughs> and so they started asking back and That's forth a simple girl <laughs> yeah <laughs> they started asking back and forth okay where can we get mashed potatoes in downtown birmingham and they start well this place has got them no this place has got them no we're gonna find them we're gonna find mashed potatoes if we can't find mashed potatoes what do you want and she's like i just want mashed potatoes <laughs> you know anything else whatever but i want mashed potatoes so we're going back to the room we we come in the room and there is a container on her bed and it's got a note on the top of it this is absolutely amazing she picks the thing up and she looks at it and it's a girl that she's from roanoke but she's studying to be a doctor she's a doctor now she uh, she left a container on the, the the bed and she said ashley um, last night i made mashed potatoes for the first time homemade mashed potatoes for the first time. I didn't know how much to make and I made way too much. And I was leaving to come to work and I stopped and just thought, hey, maybe Ashley would want some mashed potatoes. So I made this container for you and uh, I hope you're doing well. I'll come by and see you, whatever. And you... Wait, so from the moment <laughs> it was mentioned, what do you want to eat to, you just, said that going back to the room yes yeah. and you we're get to the room we're like back. what's yes, the time sir. frame there it ain't like one of them people went three to five minutes yeah, like, yeah. the three mashed five. potatoes were on the bed before you yeah. yeah god answered the prayer the night before she made the mashed potatoes <laughs> the night before and so and they were homemade it ain't like you homemade. had been up there talking the about mashed potatoes <laughs> and yeah. nothing like that so the yeah. moral of the story is ask for a lamborghini <laughs> <laughs> yeah god that's uh, crazy God doesn't just answer the big prayers. That's a, this is a big prayer right yeah. here. She's, you know, in, in our world, she's moving. But God, he is so, he is such a loving God that he thought it was really important that day that this young lady wanted mashed potatoes. And so he moved heaven and earth, <laughs> put it on a girl's heart that had never made them before. She made too much. And on her way out, she said, Ashley may want some mashed She potatoes. didn't even, did she, and I know her, but she didn't even know I like mashed potatoes like that. It's kind of weird, you know? Yeah. But, yeah. So, move both arms. They move. They move. <laughs> That's what the doctor does. When I go to the doctor, every time they make me move arms, make me stand up, turn around. I'm like, oh, you can move. I'm like, yeah. But you've had, here in the last month, you've had a challenge because of what? Pain. What do you want me to Major say? pain. You sound like I, you know, like Mr. T in Rocky Three. <laughs> Prediction for the fight. Pain. Um. What's going on with your neck right now? It just hurts sometimes. Elaborate. I don't know. Had took you, left, they've taken you off of. Work. Oh yeah, they took. They told me they didn't want me to do my job anymore. Um, so you're a lumberjack by trade. <laughs> What's your job? What's your normal job? CNA. 
And so you... I move people. I pull people. That's, I mean, that's not like the description of roll a job, them over. but I do that. Yeah, you It's a bunch to, of physical stuff. It's physical work. And so, but it's fine. But it's but I like the job, but the doctors have said I don't need to put that kind of strain on my neck. Um, I mean, because it still is metal in there. So. Um, and... I, I mean, I don't, I don't forget that it's like it is, but I mean, God did heal me. And so, you know, I, I, God did make me normal, you know, well, so I you don't. ain't normal, but you <laughs> back like you was. So, so you're yeah. trying to find something. So, uh, you yes. two folks just kind of help us pray about Ashley's situation, oh. trying to find something she can do. I ain't got but so many pet projects <laughs> at the shop. That you can um, think of. <laughs> to find something she can do that's not a strain on her um, long term jerking on people and rolling them over and doing that kind of stuff I think it has more to do with her her physical stature she she's a buck oh five you know yeah. soaking wet and and most of these folks that come to the hospital they're they're healthy kind of like myself <laughs> so. well that's all I, I wanted to let me get back over here where y'all can see me so is that good? Yeah. Uh, I wanted to, I've been wanting to get her in here and do a video because uh, all these guys on the channel, it's been a, a rough, interesting year to be in business. Lots of ups and downs. And I know people have had rough years, but there's always somebody out there that's got it worse. And there's always somebody out there that's come through something worse. And so I don't know of a more upbeat person and more cheerful person. Um, the biggest thing that, that you have going for you is your mindset. It's staying positive because you could very easily be bitter and, you know, even right now, because you're out of work and you can't work and you don't need to kind of up in the air right now again, not knowing what in the world to do. So, but you're, you stay positive. So keep staying positive. I hope that story was uh, encouragement to you and uh, we'll check in with you guys later.